Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is day 9 of Crimeus and today we will be talking about an evil like no other. Today we will be talking about the Fritzl family and the secret that lies within their basement. Elizabeth Fritzl was born on April 6, 1966 in Austria. She was the fourth out of Josef and Rosemary's seven children. The family lived a comfortable life in a big house because Josef was an engineer. He was a very well-known figure in their community and was well-liked and respected by everyone around him. He was considered as a model citizen and was described to be your regular friendly neighbor. But little did everyone know that at home, he was the complete opposite. Josef Fritzl was a tyrant to his family and would often be violent towards his wife Rosemary and their seven children. He was extremely strict and his kids hated this, especially Elizabeth. That's why when she was 16, Elizabeth ran away with a friend, only to return a few days later. Now this only cost Yosef to implement more rules on her, her siblings, and their mother. And that is also probably why it didn't really come as a surprise when just two years later, 18-year-old Elizabeth ran away from home once again. Or did she? On August 28, 1984, Elizabeth was reported missing by her father. He told the police every information that may help aid in finding her, including the fact that she had already attempted to run away just two years prior. Now, due to this information, the authorities suspected that this was a runaway case and not an abduction. And at this point, Elizabeth was already 18. So she could basically do whatever she wanted to do and go wherever she wanted to go without her parents' permission. Now, the authorities were still trying to help look for Elizabeth or at least figure out if she really did run away. But the investigation was soon put to a halt when the Fritzels received a letter from Elizabeth herself telling them that she had decided to join a cult and ask them to not look for her. And as painful as it was, Rosemary just had to accept the fact that her daughter didn't want to be around that household anymore. And soon enough, everyone in the family had moved on. Until 10 years later, when a baby in a basket was left on their front porch. Again, there was a letter in Elizabeth's handwriting saying that this was her nine-month-old baby Lisa and she wanted her parents to take care of her because she did not have the means to do so. Rosemary and Yosef gladly took this baby in and just a few years later, two more babies appear on the porch the same way as Lisa did. These babies were named Alexander and Monica. These three kids grew up normally but in a strict household just like their mother did. But they were healthy and they were educated. They had friends and had their freedom. Little things that they, at the time, didn't know how lucky they were to have. Now fast forward to April 19th, 2008. One of Elizabeth's kids was again left on the porch of the Fritzl family home. But this time, it wasn't a baby. It was a 19-year-old girl named Kristen who was extremely sick. Again, there was a letter from Elizabeth asking her parents for help because Kristen was very ill and needed to be brought to the hospital immediately. And once she was brought to the hospital, she was swiftly moved to the intensive care unit. It was later discovered that this 19-year-old girl was suffering from lung and kidney failure. But to be able to treat her, they needed to find out more about her and her medical history. The medical staff then asked her grandfather, Yosef, where her mother was, and this is when he tells them about Elizabeth and how he had just met Kristen that day. The medical staff said, okay, we'll just go ahead and check her records on the database instead. 
but upon doing so, they quickly realized that Kristen wasn't on any civil registries on the national database and that she did not legally exist. Desperate, the doctors themselves reached out to the media, begging for Elizabeth to come visit her daughter so that they could find out more about Kristen's medical history and figure out a way to help her. And this actually worked. A week into Kristen's hospitalization, Elizabeth shows up. She was already in her 40s. She was also extremely pale, just like her daughter. Now, these two were said to be so pale that their skin looked almost transparent. Now, for some reason, the medical staff found this whole situation strange and quite fishy, and they decided to call the police telling them that Kristen could be in some sort of danger. Elizabeth and Yosef were both taken in for questioning. And seeing Elizabeth right in front of their very eyes amazed the police. This was the girl who went missing 24 years ago. What happened to her? Where did she go? They weren't ready for the answers that she finally gave them five hours into the questioning. On August 28th, 1984, the day Elizabeth went missing all those years ago, she didn't run away and join a cult. She was abducted by her own father. Her mother, Rosemary, was out of the house and Yosef took this as a chance to execute his plan, something that he had been planning for over six years. He dragged Elizabeth to their basement and kept her there for the next 24 years. For the first five years of her captivity, Elizabeth was alone in the basement. Her father and her captor, Yosef, would visit her once a day to sexually violate her. At the age of 23, Elizabeth falls pregnant with her and her father's first child, Kristen, followed by Stefan, Lisa, and then Monica. Within 10 years, of being held captive, Elizabeth had given birth to four kids. And she had given birth to all of these children on her own with no medical staff to help her. All she had was a book on pregnancy and childbirth given to her by her father. In 1996, 12 years after Elizabeth Fritzel was kidnapped by her own father, she gave birth to a baby boy named Michael who had a lot of health issues. Now, Elizabeth begged her father to bring Michael to a hospital for him to get the treatment that he needed. However, Yosef completely refused. Just a few days after birth, baby Michael passed away due to heart failure. And Yosef then took the baby's body and incinerated it in a heater, burning his remains. After this, they had two more children, Alexander and Felix. But Yosef realized something. It was getting a bit too crowded in the basement. So he comes up with a backup plan. He brought three children to the main house one by one, only a few years apart from one another. These three kids were Monica, Lisa, and Alexander, and he chose these three kids specifically because they were the noisiest ones. Now, he successfully did this by forcing Elizabeth herself into writing notes saying that she wanted her parents to take care of her kids. Yosef would then put these babies in a basket and leave them on the front porch of their house for his wife, Rosemary, to find. And you may be wondering, how did Josef Fritzl keep this double life a secret for so long? 24 years to be exact. Well, he started building the basement in 1978 when Elizabeth was only 12 years old. He had been planning this for over six years. Now, the basement looked like a normal one. It had an office and a workshop for the engineer. But behind a bookshelf was actually a secret door leading to a second family that he has been keeping in captivity for the past 24 years. Escaping this basement was 
nearly impossible due to the many doors and locks leading up to the actual home that Elizabeth shared with her three children. Now, this underground home had two small rooms, a bathroom, and a tiny kitchen. There were no windows and no ventilation. These kids had no access to the outside world at all. In fact, they had never seen sunlight. They had never seen the sky, the clouds, the trees, or anything. Rosemary, her kids, and their lodgers knew nothing as well. Everyone else was prohibited from coming down to the basement and the garden on top of it. And since they were all so scared of Yosef, everyone abided by his rules. Even the 100 tenants that rented a room in their house over the past 24 years. The police were shocked and disgusted by what they had just heard. They were in complete disbelief. Josef Fritzl was detained in prison while the kids were rescued right away. On March 2009, Josef Fritzl was charged with rape, kidnapping, incest, slavery, and murder. He claims that he did this in order to protect Elizabeth from a lifestyle that he didn't think was good for her, pushing the narrative that his own daughter was a drug addict. Elizabeth then gave a recorded testimony that lasted for 11 hours. And after hearing this, Yosef breaks down in tears and apologizes to his entire family. He was then sentenced to life in prison. He is now 87 years old and is still serving time. He and Rosemary also got divorced in 2012. Elizabeth and her six living children, including the ones who were raised by Rosemary upstairs, spent one year in a clinic to receive therapy. They now live in a secret location and refuses all sorts of media coverage. And that is all that I have for you guys for today's video. This was a crazy one. And out of all of the true crime stories that I have heard, this by far is the most unbelievable one. In fact, there's actually a movie inspired by this case, but the story was downplayed a bit. And even if you watch that movie, it already seems like things like this can't happen in real life. But sadly, it did. And honestly, Yosef got what he deserved and he deserves to rot in jail for what he did. He is considered as one of the most evil men in history and he honestly deserves that title. As usual, I would love to hear your thoughts on this case. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys tomorrow.